Okay, we're back. We are back for another episode of The Daily Show. Today's episode is for July 20, 2021. And you're today's host, JR and Joe, Seth. Wait, you just call yourself in third person? And you call me my my government name. <laughs> your what? Government name? Or oh, your legal a, name? No, government name. I, we don't say legal. We say government name. The name that is on my tax form and yeah, driver license. Your, your tax passport. name. For those who don't know, Joe's real name is Joseph. There you go. Yeah, it is. Anyways, today is Tuesday, July 20th, and what are we going to be observing for today? Well, guess what? We're done with the alphabetical theme, right? So oh, I had right, to come right, up right. with something, yeah. uh, at least for this month. But mm-hmm. I think I'll be uh, keeping this, if I can, as much as I can, or as long as I can, I'll be keeping this kind of uh, theme. So what's going to be happening is we're going to have different themes from for our stop of the day now. Animal of the day will be about Disney animals. Okay. Right, right. Uh, Plan of the day will be based on our season here in uh, CA, California. Ca- oh, I thought you mean Canada. No. Oh. CAUS, so California US. Okay. Uh, mu- musical art of the day, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll be uh, showcasing um, a, a song uh-huh. from a specific artist per month. Oh, okay, so it's gonna so, be a monthly so, so. basis. We're gonna stick to one artist per so month. Per month, then we just learn all their sort of popular singles and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, word of the day will be a word that has as many letters as the month of the year. So, so today's July. Uh, so, so this month is July. So July. All is seven words. Seven month. Yes. Yeah. Seven. Okay. So, gotcha. Since July is the seventh month, then I'm we're gonna be uh, talking about words that have seven, seven letters. letters. And for tech trivia, well, I mean, tech it's trivia. Same thing that's trivia with tech. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> all right, Tuesday so tech. Let's get this rolling, buddy. Now, uh, well, before all of those, we're going to start, as always, with today's observance. So, we got International Chess Day. So, again, since this is an observance, it's good to learn the its history. So, the history of chess can be traced back nearly 1,500 years. That's, mm, that's a long time ago. Really, a long time ago, you know. Although its well, earliest origins, fifteen hundred years ago. <laughs> I know that was like what, like you're like five years old or something. That time, haha. I, I get back to you every time you tell me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> so, but the actual, I mean, as far as the exact moment, it was okay. uh, what do you call this? Uh, it originated from it originated or it started. From, it's very uncertain. Well, Obviously, we don't have any means of record uh, recording things right, that right. long, right? So, like uh, some other, <clears throat> you know, people might be playing it. They just didn't tell people about it. Yeah, doesn't mean it, the person who tell people about it is created it first. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there are some speculations, though. Um, mm. A lot of people, however, uh, thinks or at least the historians, yeah, you know, yeah speculated that uh the game the official you know with the rules and stuff actually originated in india by the 7th century ce mm. uh now as far as the ce is concerned uh that is something i'm not familiar with because I, I know bc and ad same thing as uh bc i think okay so I, ce same thing as bc would you say ce is a little bit earlier no, not really okay i there think it's go. the same thing and then what happened is uh it spread to persia mm. Um, do you guys know what country is Persia now? Yeah, Iran. Well, oh, I, I was asking them. <laughs> oh, but am I right? <laughs> That's why I said you guys know, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. But anyways, following the Arab invasion and conquest of Persia, uh-huh. chess was uh, taken up by the Muslim world and subsequently spread through this uh, to southern, southern Europe. Europe. Yeah. So by the Euro- European Middle Ages, the game evolved roughly into its current form by the 15th century. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, just like any other games, just like any other activities, there's going to be revision and... Yeah, you think about it, like, when you think of, like, the Muslims, right? Mm-hmm. They don't have any bishop because they believe in Islam, right? Mm-hmm. So there, there's a piece on the chessboard called the bishop. Yeah. And uh, the, the rook, not the rook. Yeah, the rook is a castle. Yeah. So, a castle. So, so, so the modern chess that we know now was based... It was based from the European style, right, exactly. even though the concept, you know, the concept, the concept, the concept is, was created earlier, but it's just yeah. more like naming the pieces and giving it more. Pretty design. much, it's yeah. it's basically uh, what what the uh, like version point two active people in your community yeah. back in the day, you know. So you got bishop, you got the knights, you get the king and queen, well, king, queen pawn. you know, yeah, the pawn. Because I'm pretty sure the Muslims didn't have like knights too. Nice is like they would like people. some kind of warrior. They call them warrior, but yeah, not yeah, knights. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So it's like uh, you know. It's more like a 
region appropriate. E yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Okay. So um, the rules, some of the rules of this game has also been changed multiple times throughout the history because obviously if the game is, has been being played for a long time, then mm. there, of course there's going to be rule change and all, right? Uh, for example, initially the queen could not move one square at a time, diagonally, uh, diagonally I mean, uh, so just kind of like a king. So it's like a multi-directional pawn. Mm -hmm. But uh, later she could move two squares at a time, diagonally, and then uh, it wasn't until Reconquista, Reconquista Quista Spain sorry, uh, with its powerful Queen Isabella that the Queen became the strongest piece so on the board. Our Queen is the strongest, so the Queen on the board is the strongest. Yeah. They can move any direction and uh, I mean... Any I, always, I always think about that. I mean, like, usually in a uh, monarchy, right? Because, I mean, the, the, what do you call this, the modern game of chess that we know is kind of based on kings and queens and all. Um, I always wonder why king has less moves than the queen. <laughs> well, the king is harder to come by and the king can just marry a new queen. Like King, king Henry VIII. He has like okay. many, many wives, right? But I think if the king dies, right? The only person who can take it is his heir. And how you make heirs? Queen. Yeah, that's you right. Can buy, uh -huh. You can not buy. You, marry you can, you, yeah, you can have another you queen. You can have another queen. Yeah. So the queen, well, you know how people say, Behind every man, there's a powerful woman, right? So mm -hmm. the queen is more powerful than the king. Yeah. And she does action. Well, I was going to say also, just maybe it has something to do with balancing the game too. Yeah, that's know? Too, too, yeah. Because like, the, the goal of the game is to capture the king. Right. And if the king is able to move like the queen does, then it's... High I mean, capture. Exactly, exactly. Right. So. Um, anyways, as the uh, when it comes to the game, uh, chess is one of those games who uh, where it may be simple to learn. You know, as long as you, you're basically as yes. long as you know the steps and all, but definitely hard to master. Exactly. I mean, how complicated it can get? Well, um, you know, researchers, the masters, they know they know like five moves ahead and they know it like rapid pace. Well, move, but he, tap, move, yeah, tap. here's the thing: uh, it could get like really complicated because there are 400 different possible positions after one one uh move each yes so each 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 uh, what you call it, each movement right creates a ripple effect it basically opens up like the multiverse mm -hmm. and <coughs> you, uh, oh come on <laughs> i wasn't ready for that and after that uh move or uh -huh. the third move right there's gonna be 72,084 positions yeah, yeah. Keep adding moves, and oh, you basically have billions. I'm, um, you know, billions of possibilities. Not mm -hmm. not moves, but possibilities of moves. different so. dimensions and different kings. Are we what? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, keep going. <laughs> but uh, in uh, what do you call this? Variance. Real, realistically speaking, uh -huh. the longest game lasted for six, 269 moves and ended in a draw. As far as the actual physical game, you know, right. um, the billions of possible. Positions though, or, or moves, are I wouldn't say theory, but it's like well calculated. But it hasn't happened in you know in real life yet. So there you go. Uh, if you want, try to learn chess. You know, it's a it's a fun game, right? And in our country, it's one of those games that you could see a lot of people uh, playing in the street. Easy to you learn, know? hard to master. They might not be pro, but they enjoy it. I mean, that's what that that's the what do you call this? That's the essence of a game. It's for you to enjoy. There you go. I mean, your personality is in the moves too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a good cognitive exercise too. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, so it's kind of like solving puzzles. Um, and if you happen to play chess and you win, maybe you want to jump with joy. Or you can play a game just like jump. chess, but you can jump pieces. Checkers. There you go. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, so, another one. No, today's but we're not another. talking about checkers. No, we're talking about World Jump Day. World Jump Day. Everyone, everyone uh, is encouraged to jump. And there's a funny reason behind it. What's up? Not just a regular reason. Um, <clears throat> world Jump Day encourages people around the world to jump simultaneously. Because the idea behind the initiative or this initial observance was to have millions of people jump at the same time in order to change the Earth's orbit. Uh... But we already know <laughs> that it's not going to happen. You know why it's not going to happen? No, do if, I know if, why it's going to happen? I'll tell you why it's not going to happen. I'm going to say we don't have enough mass. Even that, but you know what else is? What? If everyone jumping at the same time, right? You're pushing one way, you're pushing the other way, right. you cancel out. Yeah, that's right. So you push this way, this way, the other one pushes this way, they all want to cancel out. There's actually a, a YouTube video about one of these educational channel where they talk about what's going to happen if everyone, like everyone stays in one place. 
uh, all the people around the world stays in one area, you know, one land area Nothing and try happens. to jump. Not, nothing's gonna happen. So I mean, we're, we're in a grand scheme of things, right? Yeah. We, Earth is way, way heavier, heavier than heavier. all of us, you know. Except for your mama. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Uh, the primary goal of World Jump Day is to help uh, combat global warming. Uh, Wait, even what? though there's no, I know, even though there's really no significant effect if everyone tries to jump at the same time, you know, it's... Uh, no, changing Earth's orbit is not going to reduce global warming. It's, it's probably going to cause different kind of uh, issues. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, a lot of these people, especially those who made this observance, uh, believe that changing the Earth's orbit could help reduce global warming. It, uh, like I said, believe, you know, they haven't... Uh, the theoretically proved it because obviously uh, nothing happened or nothing will happen even if we all jump at the same time we can't we won't be able to move uh, Earth's orbit or we're not even gonna affect it you know okay <laughs> however it is unproven that having millions of people jump at the same time would make difference in Earth's orbit just like what we said a while ago and I sounded like I repeated myself um, but jumping itself has a good uh, benefit for uh, for us physically yeah, 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 yeah. you know it stimulates metabolism uh, it helps oxygen circulation it's basic it's a form of exercise a physical activity yeah like jumping jacks mm -hmm. uh, jump rope long jump strength it strengthens your leg muscles it does yeah, yeah. Uh, and so for today uh, try to you know uh, do one or two jumps or include jumps in your exercise if you can't jump just hop or hop yeah uh-huh mm -hmm. you don't have to jump high as long as your feet is off the ground without you sitting or or you know depending on any other things so is you're suspended in the air at least yeah. so yeah is it like skipping kind of like alternating jumps <laughs> i would say so yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah. uh yeah. the only thing i because when when i say jump or for me when when i hear the word jump it's more like more vertical yes like you're not really moving but if you're moving it's more like hopping and all but i still consider that jumping oh, okay yeah yeah you're leaping into the air leaping yeah, yeah. uh-huh okay so there you go. And uh, let's see, a part of my exercise that I do when I jump would be burpees, which is hard. Uh, so I don't really do that much. So what? What? if you guys don't know what burpees is in exercise, you jump push up. and then you push up. I thought you push up first. Uh, either way, I think. You push I think either up, way. You can jump up, then you mm -hmm. go back and into then, push yeah. up position and do it over and over. It is it, tiring. It, it sounds simple, but it is very tiring. Well, if you take it serious, not seriously, but if you take it uh with no rest because you're supposed to be doing it with no rest in between like jump push up you don't you know you don't stop and then jump again and push up yeah yeah be continuous about it but i i don't do that i i have to rest and uh do my second one, so. <laughs> but hey i mean i'm at least i'm you know you're trying, trying to be physically active. yeah 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 all right so if world jump day is not for you then maybe you can do moonwalk I'm kidding. Not not the moonwalk, not the Michael Jackson moonwalk, but more like the uh, national moonwalk that has something to do with space. That's why uh, there's a uh, another observance at the bottom, right? There's space, space exploration, exploration day, day because it has something to do with space. With what? Neil, uh, Buzz, and who was the third person? Uh, Michael Collins. Michael. You know, being able to land on the moon so and started walking over there. This and last week, it was mostly about the Apollo 11 mm -hmm. and the first uh, man. I think it is tied man to this space mission. To, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. It, well, it, it's it because is, it takes several days for yeah. you to, you know, when, when you go out of the orbit of Earth to the moon. I don't know how they're able to get a picture of the Earth and the moon in the studio in Burbank. I would say this is, I don't think this is an actual picture of it. I just like try to Google, you know. So you're telling me the space landing was fake? Just no, kidding. I'm just saying just this, kidding. this picture, it might not be the uh, the actual picture. Yes. Like I said, I it's had a, to get some wallpaper. Yeah. 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 But it is a representation of what we achieved as human race uh, through uh, throughout our uh, space adventure. That looked like me know? going camping in the snow. My backpack. <laughs> yeah, do you have your lunch there? Yeah, I'm like, it, looks, it looks like I have lunch there. Got my lunchables. So, yes, on July 20, which is today, uh, 1969, Apollo 11 carried the first humans to the moon. Six hours after landing on the moon, American Neil Armstrong stepped into the lunar space and I just you know, lunar surface. Oh, oh yeah, lunar surface, not space because he's you, already in space. He he's already <laughs> there already in space and he has to have something to walk on. Yeah, yeah. surface. Uh, I, ju I was gonna say, you know, I, I wonder what the feeling is the first time you step on 
a uh, an alien land. When I say alien land, it's not from Earth, obviously, right? I, I mean, know, I know that feeling. The feeling is just wow. I haven't tried it, but I, I just can't imagine. You I know? have a feeling that represents it. When I get new shoes and you put in your feet in, it feels like whoa. <laughs> oh, exactly. do, you, do you feel like uh, your your light uh, light foot is uh, the term where it's it's like it's something that's molding to my foot. Oh man, it's brand new, and I I always chase for that feeling. That's why I have like. 60 plus shoes. I'm surprised you don't have an astronaut's shoes. I do. Really? I do have a NASA. You should show me. It's a moon boot. You should show me because uh, I'll be interested. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, 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 it's Vans. It has NASA. I think it's Apollo 11 too. Wait, I did check. Mm. But I do have it. Yeah. I really wanted to see it, by the way. Okay, I'll bring it tomorrow. So we got other notable observances uh we got national fortune cookie day yep when uh, i don't know any advice i take fortune cookie advice that's why i always buy chinese music you know you know what's sad ian just uh told me or showed me that the fortune cookies now also have ads at the oh. at the other side which is i mean come on really you're putting everything you're putting ads on everything now even fortune you know what? i don't like that why because they're using a lot of ink and the ink might seep into the cookie that's true yeah, yeah. Um, if you're not a fan of for fortune cookie though, uh, there's lollipop. Oh, uh, just more sugar. National lollipop day. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the third one would be third other notable observance is what I meant. National uh, ugly truck contest day. So it's kind of like an ugly sweater contest, but for, for trucks. trucks. Yeah. There you go. So those are our other notable observances. Now today in history. <clears throat> in 1865, we got Pierre Lalamon. Uh, arrives in the u.s now you might not know him but we did talk about him last year he's writing something very peculiar yes uh he's the one well he's a frenchman who arrives in the u.s carrying the plants and components for the first modern bicycle mm, so that's yeah what it is. so if you guys have bikes at home uh you enjoy it thanks to mr lalamont right there i can't even pronounce his last name in a french accent because i'm not french yeah um, he unfortunately received no significant reward or recognition for introducing the nation to an invention that soon became ubiquitous because... Well known worldwide. As, well, the good thing is we got records of who good brought it and uh, I guess... It back to him. You yeah, can chase it back to him. I guess today, at least this year, uh, we give the credit he deserved. I mean, it, I think he sells clothes now. Lululemon. Just kidding. <laughs> Lululemon. <laughs> La -la it, it's... It's it's an apparel, it's not a bike, Joe. Uh, yeah. If I would start a bike uh, shop, yeah, I'm probably gonna it? I'm probably gonna name it Lala Mall. I mean, just you know, just a recognition of uh, for for someone who who actually brought the plants. For shout sure. out, shout out to Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> uh, notable figure born today, we have Edmund, Edmund Hillary. Hillary. There you go. Um, he was born in New Zealand. Um, Edmund Hillary is an explorer and mountaineer, and together with uh, Nepalese Tenzing Norgay, um, they were the first climbers to reach the summit of Mount Everest and return safely. Because you guys know the 5.5 mile high. Is it 5.5 miles? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, and by the way, the higher you go, the less oxygen you got, and that's you get lightheaded. Yeah, that's where the danger comes in, and unfortunately, a lot of these mountaineers who dared conquer this amazing feet mountain i would say uh you know some of them are not able to come back you know or some of them actually stop at at some point Halfway and just point yeah and just come back, yeah. back uh, edmund that. though and uh, tenzing they were able to conquer it so pretty awesome for our place of the week we're going to cuba so we'll talk about some national symbols in cuba and traditional games First, we got the Tokororo or the Cuban Trogon. So that's the national bird of um, Cuba Tokororo. because its feathers uh, share the same colors as the Cuban flag. We got oh, red, blue, and white. Red, blue, and white. Yeah, there you go. I mean, what more, what, what other animals could you, you know, if you have an animal that shares the same color pattern as your you might as well flag? Use it. I wish we have an animal that is yellow, white, blue, and red. It could be this, but minus the yellow, because we got yellow in our flag. You know. Okay. <laughs> but yes, the Tokororo or Cuban Trogon is also called the bird related to, or is 
also a uh, a bird that is related to the quetzal and i think we talked about that bird before quetzal. one of our daily show quetzal yeah quetzal quetzalcoatl <laughs> that's a different one that's yeah, a different one yeah next would be the uh white national flower mariposa. white mariposa or butterfly jasmine so either way you can call it uh either of the two you know uh, Naturally, this endemic jasmine species grow Native. in more yeah. uh, humid places like lagoons, but uh -huh. it can be grown domestically as well. Um, historically, Cuban women transferred messages to men in, uh, in the front line during the battles of independence using these flowers. So that's kind of like their love letters. Pretty cool. Have you, have you received the uh, white mariposa before? Yes, I have. No, you haven't. I was fighting for a revolutionary in Cuba. I know. You haven't, Joe. I haven't. <laughs> traditional game, not your, not their national sports, but traditional game. You should know this, domino. Domino, but I don't know if we. I think the common dominoes here in the U.S. only has like six dots, uh -huh. but theirs has a uh, nine. So that's kind of like the major difference. Oh, I never realized. So that. nine yeah, by nine, we yeah. Six. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we six. Here we only got six by six, right? Yeah. I mean the max number. So yeah, there you go. I'm just it's a game of skill unlike a mellow rainy day domino uh, games many of us imagine so uh, and and just like how we treat chess in the Philippines uh -huh. uh, dominoes are kind of like that like you know you, you would see people outside their house just playing domino so yeah very traditional a very uh, famous game for everyone pretty much in Cuba and that is our place of the week Moving Cuba. on to our stuff of the day. Remember the uh, themes we talked about? So Disney animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the first thing that came into my mind. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, it, it is a Disney animal. It's, yeah, I know. That makes it. We them. got You got 101 of that in one of the uh, Disney's animated or live action film. I mean, the newest one was uh, Cruella, right? Mm -hmm. Which is recent too. So uh, some interesting things about Dalmatian is that they, when they when they are born, they don't have any spots. Mm. They only uh, form their spots as they uh, grow older. Uh, their spots start to develop around two to three weeks uh, old. By the time Dalmatian puppies are four weeks old, most of their spots will be present. So, so pretty cool. My first dog was a Dalmatian. Oh, we had a lot of dogs, but you know, like, because Dalmatian is not really local to the philippines yes. so i would say dalmatian is my first foreign dog really yes uh-huh you had a dalmatian yeah oh. uh she's a female dalmatian i uh, had we, a female dalmatian too we named her majari oh. and uh unfortunately we weren't able to she wasn't able to come with us when we went here uh yeah it's a cute dog yeah but she's 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 really fun and you know, we we had that mentality in the Philippines before that if the dog is foreign, he or she won't get along with the local dogs. Yeah, sure. but but she actually did. She actually did. She you know she treat them as friends and family and all. So they're pretty cool. Dalmatians. Okay. All right. Uh, the Dalmatian is the only dog breed that was bred to be a coach dog. Um, they would run alongside carriage, protecting the horse from stray dogs and keeping horses calm. Um, they also acted as a guard dog, providing security at stops and alerting drivers of any approaching dangers and lastly you guys all know when you say dalmatian they are kind of like a partner of firemen firefighters firefighters yeah. yes there you go that's our animal of the day dalmatian. next beets now it says summer but technically beets kind of grow on late summer well still you know part of summer uh and early fall winter slash um from juice to hummus to salads uh, these or this veggie is showing up everywhere, adding color, antioxidants, and flavor at every turn. Are you a fan of beets? No. Yeah, I love beets. I do have beets too. Mm. I like to listen to them. I get beet every day. <laughs> That's a different beet. Is that a B E A T? No, I go to farmer market and get beets every day. Oh, what every day? I said every day, like yeah. early in the morning, because you're here at like early in the morning. I have All a right? farm, shoot farms. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> the beet and its greens are both an excellent source of folate, vitamin A, and vitamin K. Nice. Uh, and are very good source of manganese, copper, and potassium. Um, yep. Additionally, beets are high in fiber, which helps with uh, satiety. 
diet or your your how do you say it? Uh, bowel movements. Bowel movements. There you Regularity. go. Regularity. Regularity. There you go. It keeps you full and it keeps you regular. Yeah, and you can turn beets into uh, juice. into juice too, like beetroot beet juice. juice. Yeah, there you go. You know Which... what beet juice is? No, blood. When I got beet, I got beet juice. Blood. Anyways, huh? which is by the way again a good source of antioxidants. It is. There you go. So if you guys haven't tried it, give it a try. You know, I mean, I I tried it before. I like it. Not my favorite thing, but I still eat it and drink it. You know. Keep saying you know. Oh. Musical art of the day for this month. I know it's kind of halfway already in the month, but might as well. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Bee Gees and their songs, some of their songs for the whole month. First, we have Too Much Heart in 1967. Too Much Heaven. <laughs> oh my gosh, I said heart. Too Much Heaven. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Too Much Heaven. Uh, this is one of Bee Gees' most recognizable singles. Um, also happens to be one that help out those in need uh, because uh, While well, Too Much Heaven saw the brother band uh, leaning more towards R&B style, the track is also notable for the fact that the band promised to donate all the royalties they receive from the song to United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, aka UNICEF. UNICEF. There you go. So this song helped the band donate more than $7 million for, to the charity and was recognized by then president Jimmy Carter. Ooh, Jimmy Carter. As far as the song itself, well, uh, it hit number one in both United States and Canada. Mm, so, yes. yeah, and then also rose up in the top three uh, in the charts, music charts. UK and everywhere else. So, I, I think the title just uh, fits perfectly on what they did, you know, Too Much Heaven. Because uh, when you say heaven, it's kind of like, calming and relaxing and everything and the fact that they actually donated all uh they got from the royalty of the song mm. i you know for, for those who 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 were helped by that donation right they probably got a piece of their heaven i'm just saying you know so so for the entire month of this month we're going to talk about more songs for the Bee Gees. Right? yes all right cool 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 i like the Bee Gees. Okay, so we're in July, and mm -hmm. for our word of the day, we get we need to have a word that has seven letters long. That are that is seven letters. Let's long. count it. Let's spell it first and see if it's seven. Word of the day: We got jogging. Now I'm gonna we're gonna be using our fingers to see if we, it's actually seven letters. J O G G I N G. Seven. Seven. Nice. Uh, it's a noun. Oh wait. Actually, it's a verb. I'm sorry, I forgot to change it. Scratch yeah. that noun. It's a... It could be a noun too, by the way. It depends on how you use it. Like jogging clothes. Yes. Well, jogging pants. Well, I think that's more of an adjective. adjective. It's yeah. an adjective. So to make it clear, it could be a verb, mainly a verb, if you use it as an action word. If you use it to describe, it will be an adjective. And if you use it as a, uh, oh, yeah. a subject in the sentence, then it could be a noun. And it means pretty much simple. The activity of running at a steady, gentle pace as a form of physical exercise. Mm. You don't know how to use the word? Don't worry, because I got you uh, with the Joe sentence right here. I saw Joe jogging down the street. Because you like to jog. I do, but I don't jog in the streets. I jog in uh, the, tr the trail. Cause I like, like the riverbed? Yeah, the riverbed. Because I'm like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. We should uh, do that again. It's just hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. My, I mean, I like jogging. Not the best thing to do, but I like, I mean, for me, not the best thing that I prefer doing. But I don't know, hot weather, man, I'm just saying. No, it's good because when you're jogging in hot weather, you're sweating more. The more you sweat, the more your pores are cleared out. And you got True. More so clear, the more you nice sweat, skin. the less you jog because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is that, is the that more true? you jog, the more you jog, you soon get more uh, cardiovascular health, and you don't sweat as much. You don't exert as much energy. I, yeah, I think also uh, the opposite is when you jog during winter time or when it's cold, you have to double your effort just because you're not sweating that much. Yes, but during that, I usually compensate by wearing more clothing. Or the uh, what do you call that? The the one that makes you sweat more. The thermal, thermal oh, jacket yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thermal sweater or trash bags, <laughs> or trash bags. Yeah. yeah, people use trash bags to keep in the heat. You trap the heat in, so you sweat more. Uh huh. And you and kind of like help you uh, stay warm too during winter time. So. For during the winter, I usually jog because it's colder. I can jog longer. So during 
winter, I usually do that to increase my distance. Okay. And during the summer, I usually just do sprints so I can go get it get it done fast. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to stay in the sun too long. I don't got super tan. Uh huh. But I do enjoy jogging. Jogging is one of my uh, one of my kind of like meditation for me. Oh, that's it, good. It, it helps me relax. And you know, it keeps me healthy. Do you uh, are you able to jog by yourself? I, I believe you do. Huh? Well, obviously, yeah. Yeah. I, for me, I'm kind of like the opposite. If I don't have anyone to jog with, that I feel it feels boring for me. Really? Yeah. I That's why I prefer music, treadmill. I, I usually put on music and I, I can go like five miles every day. Sometimes even more, and go home and just feel you know more relaxed and well rested. Hmm. Well, not well rested, more relaxed and refreshed. And refreshed. Yeah. There you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, jogging is really. Very healthy. I like it. Well, yeah, definitely. All right, so last part of our show today is today's today we got the tech trivia. This is something interesting because it's I didn't know about this, and of course now I know, and I, I'm like, what? You know, uh, if you guys have computers and you might have heard of this internet browser called the Firefox. You know, it's kind of like the uh, Safari and Mac. Uh, and uh, Internet Explorer or Google Chrome, their internet browser for you to go to YouTube or Facebook or Joe's favorite website. Uh, DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. What? That's not a website. What's your favorite website? Uh, where you buy shoes? Nike. Oh, Nike. Well, I thought you have like a, what do you call it? Like a boutique website for shoes. Oh, no, no. Just get it from Nike, dude. Oh, okay. There you go. Nike's or Adidas. That's not where you get my stuff. So did you guys know, speaking of the Firefox um, internet browser, their, lo their logo, if you first take a look, and hence the name, it, you would think right away that it's a fox, right? It's not. But it was actually, it wasn't. It was not actually based from, from, a, from the animal fox. Instead, uh, it was based from an animal called the red panda. Ooh. Red panda right there in the picture that you see. Wait, red panda's not a fox. It's not. It's more like a, a raccoon. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, so, what happened was the very first Mozilla logo uh, after the decline of Netscape. I don't know if you guys heard of Netscape, but yeah. I heard of Netscape. I'm old. A very, very, very old software. You know, uh, was a uh, phoenix born from its flames. Uh, when they had to change their name, they opted out for an animal that was not well known on the web at that time, Fox. and so. Not a fox, but a, a red, red panda. panda. There you go. Unfortunately, people thought it was uh, the animal on the Mozilla Firefox logo was a fox. But I'm, I'm just saying, you have, uh, if you're the one who developed it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect people to recognize this as a, as a fox. But maybe it's also part of their... Um, marketing. Marketing or their, uh, what do you call this? Their, um, like, like it's trivial. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like trivial, you know, like, oh, all right, we're going to name it Firefox, but we're not going to tell them it's not based on a, on a fox. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, the Firefox was uh, actually a red panda, which is a protected species in Asia. So they're protected, meaning that their population is declining and uh, we need or us are trying to protect them to not be extinct. Mm. Uh, another reason that contributed to to the name Firefox or for to the people thinking that this animal is a fox is that there was a mistake when translating red panda from Chinese to English and that's how we got Firefox. I mean I understand it's, it looks like a fox and his fur is fire like mm -hmm. in color. Yeah, I can get that. <laughs> I mean translation, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Mistranslation. Like no, it's red panda. Alright, we're gonna name it Firefox. And there you have it. Uh, yeah. But that's really cool. That's really cool. I, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Anyways, that's our show for today, guys. Thank you for staying with us until the end. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. I forgot to change on the last slide. There we go. I uh, Don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. Right. And Enjoy the rest of your... I got to make sure which episode is it going to be tomorrow. Wednesdays. Ian. There you go. Yes. Last, last time in my episode, I forgot the day. <laughs> so that's why I got Joseph here. Yep. Thank you, Joseph, for reminding me and correcting me. No problem. And I will do the same for your episode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now, guys. All right. Have a good day, guys.